Hi guys, in this video we're going to look at the Delivery API, which is part of the content.ai suite of several APIs available. The Delivery API's main purpose is to allow us to pull data from the CMS. The Delivery API in this video is based on REST. Of course, there is a GraphQL based version also, which you can check out in the link I have included in the description below. The Delivery API is how we pull CMS data and propagate it across channel applications such as websites, mobile apps, smartwatch apps, or whatever channel we're propagating to. Now in this video, I'll cover setting up a JS based front end and installing the required packages. I'll look at the model generator package, which gives us a strongly typed content model reference. And I'll show you how you can render dynamic content on our web page. So let's dive in. So the first thing we'll need to do is we'll need to create a Next.js web application for our examples. As you can see, I'm using Visual Studio Code. And what I'll do is I'll enter the command to create our Next.js web application for us. You can see here I'm calling it my app. So let's run that. So what this will do is it will, it will create a scaffolded sample Next.js web application and then we'll be able to build out further examples on top of this as a base. So let's just wait for that to finish and there we go, that's done. If we open up the file tree on the left here, we can see this has all been scaffolded for us. And Let's go into the application folder and we can run a build just to see that it compiles. There we go, perfect. And let's run it and let's see what it looks like in, in the browser. Let's get the browser open. There we go. So next, let's change this start page a little bit so that it's more suitable for our upcoming examples. So if I go back into Visual Studio Code, if I go to Pages and Index, so that's that um, page that we're seeing here. So I'll go ahead and update this. So I'll remove all this stuff that's been added here. Let's get rid of that and replace it with some placeholder text there. So we'll save that and let's see what that looks like now. So now we have a working Next.js web application. From here, we can build on top of it as we continue with our next examples. As you can see on our start page, we now have some placeholder text for three specific attributes. We'll be pulling this data in from the CMS Next by utilizing the delivery API. For the next step, we'll need to create a content type and content item to continue with our example. As you can see on this start page, we now have some data which we'll want to pull from the CMS and display dynamically. So I'm going to go into content.ai and create a basic content type that we'll be able to use for our example. So as you can see here, I'm in the content.ai CMS and what I'll do is I'll go into content model and I'll create a new content type and I'll call it basic page. And for this basic page, I'll create these three elements that we're going to require. So a heading, a blurb, and content. So the first one, I'll use a text element. I'll name it heading. Then I'll use another text element for blurb. And lastly, I'll use a rich text element for the content. Save that. There we go. And now what I can do is I can create a content item based on this new content type. 
So I'm going to create new. And I'll call it sample content item. I'll give it a heading. I'll give it a blurb. And I'll finish off with some content here. There we go. That's now saved. And we have our content item there. So what we're going to do now is we're going to jump back into Visual Studio Code. And before we can use the delivery API to actually pull that data dynamically, we're going to have to install some packages. So next we're going to install a couple of content.ii packages. The first one will be the delivery API SDK. So if we go to GitHub, this is the repo for the delivery SDK. Note the URL there, but I'll put the URLs in the description um, later for, for reference. So let's go ahead and grab the command line text to install this package. Wait for that to install. There we go. Now we'll get one more package, the model generator which will help us a great deal when we're working with our content model from the CMS. So the model generator creates JavaScript classes relating to the content model data objects so that we have nice strongly typed entities to work with in our code. So again, in GitHub, this is the model generator repo and we'll grab this command line text to install the package. And we'll go ahead and install it in Visual Studio Code. So both those packages are now installed. What I'll do next is I'll create a new folder here so that our generated code files have a place to live. So we'll call it models. There it is, currently blank. And I'll go into models there. So we're now inside this folder. So now we'll need to run the script to generate our content model. So this is the script that we need to run. We'll just need to substitute a couple of API keys in here. So the project ID and the API key. So we get those from the CMS. So if I go back into content.ai, project settings, API keys, First one I'll get is the project ID. So we'll replace that. And then I'll need the management API key. So I'll grab this one, paste that in. And now we can run this script in its entirety. So back into Visual Studio Code. And let's run it and see what happens. Just a note um, on getting these keys. It's safe for me to show the API keys on this video because once the video is published, this project will be deleted and the API keys will become useless. But keep in mind that you need to keep these keys private and to exercise caution when sharing them for whatever reason. Another point to make is that in the examples here, I am explicitly using the API keys in my functions, which you'll see in a moment but it's best practice to use environment variables or equivalent when dealing with a real world application. So we can see here a whole bunch of stuff's happened. Uh, there's been generation done of files based on the content model. And if we go into the models folder, you can see some subfolders have been created. The one that we're concerned with at the moment is content types. So there's our basic page content type and you can see it's got our elements it's got our blurb our content and our heading 
So the next thing we'll need to do is we'll need to update our start page. And what I'll do is I'll make my additions and then I'll talk through them once I'm done. So let me just update the import here. We'll need to add our delivery SDK reference, also our basic page that the model generator created for us. I'll just continue populating this out. And then as I mentioned, I'll talk through it in a little bit more detail once I'm done. Almost done. Okay, so what I did was I made some updates based on the props that our Next.js application is using, as you can see here. Um, but most notably, I'm importing the delivery client. I'm importing the basic page generated model, which our model generator created for us. And if we go down here, I'm initializing the delivery client. So we'll need to populate these values in a moment, the project ID and the preview API key. And here I've created a function to retrieve a basic page content item. So you can see here, we're casting um, back to that type, which our model generator created our class file for. So that gives us um, that strongly typed context. So one thing you'll note here, we're using preview mode, which means we're getting the unpublished data. So by the preview API. So what I'll do now is I'll go ahead and jump into the CMS and I'll get the project ID and I'll get the preview API key as well. So just like we did earlier with the model generator, I'll get the project ID, put that in there and we'll need the preview API key as well. So preview API, get that, put it in, and there we go. That should be all we need to do, apart from actually pulling the dynamic data out, which I'll look at in a moment. But let's, let's just test this and build it. So let me jump out of this directory and pull the npm run build just to see everything's okay. Everything looks fine. So what I can do now is if we go to our basic page, we can see our element fields. So we've got blurb, we've got content, we've got heading. We can now reference those. So the first thing we'll need to do is, if you remember, I've got this placeholder here for our item code name. So let's go into the CMS and let's get the code name of our content item. So this is the one we created, sample content item. I can get the code name here, sample content item, perfect. And we'll put that in there. So we'll be referencing this specific content item. And now what I can do is I can replace these values. So I'll go into here, use my curly braces, and I can go basic page dot elements dot c strongly typed dot value i can do the same for the blurb 
of that. And finally, we'll do it for the content as well. There we go. So let's save that and let's run it. And let's see what that looks like. Fresh, and there we go. We have our dynamic content. So that's a very simple example of how we can use the delivery API to pull data from the CMS. Although simple and rudimentary, it shows some good examples of setting up a JS-based front end, installing the required packages, the advantage of generated models, and of course, rendering our dynamic content from the CMS to the web channel's front end. I hope this video helped you get started and on your way to developing some awesome applications with Content.ai as the CMS backend. Thanks guys.